Hello, my friends. It's that time of the week. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. It's the day that we all hump, but it's also the day that we all sit down and talk about the entertainment news that came out during the week. This is Real Deal. And I am Andrew Fantasia. And you are watching this video. See that? I just gave you three facts. I'm like Bill Nye the Science Guy. Sort of. So what's new in the world of entertainment news this week? Well, coming up this Friday, just a few short days away, there is another Marvel film coming out. And at this point, a Marvel film coming out is an event. It is just the big deal. It's the cream of the crop. You know, it doesn't get any better than this at this point. They are rocketing along and we got Ant-Man and the Wasp. Obviously, it's going to be a much smaller scale film than Infinity War. Pun intended. But according to rumor, there is going to be some Easter eggs in this film that might apply to the upcoming Marvel slate. There's been chat across the wire from people like Kevin Feige and Peyton Reed who have been saying that when we see the quantum realm in Ant-Man and the Wasp, two things are going to happen. A, we're going to see more of it than we did in the first film. And B, it's going to contain Easter eggs that might hint at the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, this could be a plethora of things, okay? These Easter eggs could be anything. I mean, in the last film, there was an Easter egg in the Quantum Realm where we saw a silhouette of Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, the original Wasp. And that was an Easter egg saying that, yeah, she's still in there and now we're going to see her in the sequel. So it could be something like that, very basic, or it could be something a bit more cosmic and out there because now cosmic and out there is kind of what Marvel's doing and they're doing it very well. So what can we expect to see in this quantum realm? Well, I have a few theories. Number one, a character who vanished in Infinity War. The quantum realm is another realm entirely. You know, it is not really of this Earth, as far as I can tell. It feels like it's another dimension. When the people in Infinity War vanished into dust, I mentioned during my review of that film that you can hear slightly different sounds every time somebody vanishes, which leads me to believe that these people have been transported to another plane of existence, another dimension somewhere. Uh, somewhere out of the way. And what is the quantum realm if not out of the way. So I think we're going to see a character in there, in the background, you know, it's not like Black Panther's gonna show up and be like, hi Ant-Man, I'm floating in this weird void too, isn't this crazy? Thanos snapped his finger, you missed that. That was a big deal. I don't think that's gonna take place, but I think, you know, there's gonna be the adventure going on, Wasp and Ant-Man are gonna be dealing with some stuff, but if you look way in the background, you might see, I don't know, Groot or something? Somebody's gonna be in there. Theory number two is that we'll get a hint about the upcoming Phase 4. Now, it has been a minute since Marvel showed up at the El Capitan Theater and unleashed their slate for Phase 3 to our bewildered minds and got my heart a-pumping for many, many years. That slate was just the most impressive thing I've ever seen a movie studio do, and it was outrageous is the best word for it, in a good way. Now, Kevin Feige has explicitly stated that he's not keen on repeating that pattern for Phase 4 because he felt that by revealing the title for Infinity War before Age of Ultron had even come out, he sort of dampened the mood on Age of Ultron because all of a sudden everybody watching Ultron was sitting there thinking, yeah, this is good, but I'm too excited for Thanos now. I don't care about this robot. And that, that kind of hurt it. I mean, Age of Ultron gets a lot of flack, personally. I love that movie to death. I don't think it deserves that flack, but here we are. So it still remains to be seen whether or not Marvel will unleash a buttload of logos for a buttload of movies this early on in the game anymore. If that does happen, I can guarantee it won't happen until well after Avengers 4 comes out. However, since Ant-Man and the Wasp is two days away, what Phase 4 hint could we get in there? Well, here's what I'm hoping. The Quantum Realm is another dimension, but it is another dimension very rooted in the world of science. Science leads to the quantum realm. It's not really a magic place like a place Doctor Strange would go and it's not really a physical other realm like where Thor lives. 
Uh, this is a scientific dimension. And who knows scientific dimensions better than the Fantastic Four, baby? They're always going to play. They're going to, what do they have? Like the, the negative zone and the cosmic zone or whatever. There's so many zones they go to. I know the negative zone is one of them. The quantum realm sounds like the kind of place, you know, Reed Richards would be like, hey, I, I look at this portal I just whipped up that leads to the quantum realm. How about that? I did it before lunch. What's for lunch? That's something he would do. So imagine, you know, we get our little Ant-Man and the Wasp adventure, but intense. And they're fighting their way through the quantum realm. And off in the background, far, far away, we see what looks like a little person on fire flying around. That's all I'm saying. So that's what I think is going to happen. What do you think is going to happen in this quantum realm? What are these Easter eggs that everybody's talking about? Let me no. So that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, that animated movie that's coming out later this year. At first I wanted nothing to do with it. I thought it was just going to be weird and stuff and I don't know, it just felt cheap to me when I heard about it. Then I saw the trailer and I'm like, damn, this looks kind of neat. So now we're getting news about other Spider-Men who might pop up. We know that there is Miles Morales, who is the star, and we know that Peter Parker also shows up. But now we're getting news about other Spider-Men who might be popping up into the mix, one of which is Spider-Man Noir. I'm pretty sure he debuted in the comics, because who doesn't debut in the comics? But I remember Spider-Man Noir from the video game Shattered Dimensions. That's the first time I ever heard of him. And he was from a Marvel Universe where everything was like a film noir, which is kind of cool, I'm not going to lie. I'd watch that movie. MCU meets Sin City? Booyah. But he was from there, and he was a very different kind of Spider-Man, and he had a trench coat and such. And apparently he's going to show up in Into the Spider-Verse, and it sounds like he is being played by none other than Nicolas Cage. His soul is still dancing. This is kind of exciting, man. We're getting an animated movie where Nicolas Cage is playing a Spider-Man character. This is dope. I'm more excited for this movie the more I hear about it. And I still don't know what the plot is going to be. I have no idea who the villain is or if there is a villain. But it looks beautiful. I love the idea of multiple Spider-Man coming together. And Nicolas Cage being Spider-Man noir just sounds like a bundle of fun. I don't know what level of cage he's going to be bringing to this role, but just imagine him going full cage in the middle of an animated Spider-Man movie. I think that alone makes it worth the price of admission. So we'll see what happens when Into the Spider-Verse hits theaters this winter. Here's a story that made me really upset. A lot of people love Star Wars, a lot of people hate Star Wars, and it's okay either way. And of course, one of the most contested parts of Star Wars is... Jar Jar Binks, this lovable doofus right here. A lot of people hate him, and that's okay. I love Star Wars. I tolerate Binks. I don't hate him. I don't love him. I understand people who hate him because he's not the greatest character. And my buddy James Rizile from Rebel Scum Podcast is going to shoot me for saying that, but that's how I feel. He's not the greatest character. However, whether or not you like Jar Jar or Star Wars, I don't know why I have to keep saying this. Star Wars fans, you know who you are. Not all of you do this, but you know who you are. Stop tormenting the cast and crew of these movies. Please, get yourself a hobby. Something. For God's sake. Get a job. Ahmed Best is this man right here, and he is the man who played Jar Jar Binks. He provided the voice, and he did the motion capture. Ahmed Best is a talented performer. Uh, I think he had a start in the circus, uh, because he's very flexible, and he does, you know, stunts and flips and stuff, which made him ideal to play the very rubbery character of Jar Jar Binks. Ahmed Best took to Twitter very recently, and revealed that because of the intense amount of hatred directed his way for Jar Jar Binks, he contemplated suicide. In fact, he got really close to doing so. And he took a photograph of himself with his young son at a spot, looks like it's on a bridge or something, where he was ready to jump. Best says in his tweet, 20 years next year, I faced a media backlash that still affects my career today. This was the place I almost ended my life. It's still hard to talk about. I survived, and now this little guy is my gift for survival. Between this and, you know, the stuff aimed at George Lucas and the stuff aimed now at Kelly Marie Tran and Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy. It, it makes me ashamed to be a Star Wars fan because I feel, I feel so bad for these people, these artists who are putting themselves out there and doing their job and doing their best. And this is the thanks they get for it from whiny, crying babies. I don't care what you hated and what you loved about Star Wars. I don't give a fuck, okay? 
You don't do this to people. You don't terrorize them on social media or what have you and, and make them feel worthless for something that they just did to entertain your sorry ass. This man, Ahmed Best, is a talented performer who stepped into a role that not many people would be brave enough to step into. And you know what? Yeah, it was a pretty lame character. And if I never see Jar Jar Binks in anything again, I'm fine with that. But I'm so happy for this man. I'm so happy that he could overcome the doubt that was gnawing at him. The doubt that was placed there by whiny armchair assholes with nothing better to do and live his life and have a child and enjoy the beauty of his life as a new father. That warms my heart. So cheers to you, Mr. Best, and to your son. I wish you guys all the best luck in the world and best of luck in your future endeavors, whatever it may be. And the same goes to Kelly Marie Tran, to George Lucas, to Kathleen Kennedy, and to Ryan Johnson. Thank you guys. Thank you for what you've made. If you're a fan of Chucky, you might be in for some good news. The Chucky series is one that I've not really paid a whole lot of attention to. I've seen the first one. I've seen, I think it's part two. Whatever the one is where it ends where they're in a warehouse and the kid and his sister pour acid on Chucky and he melts. Can't remember. I think that's part two. Uh, but I haven't seen any of the others. I haven't seen Pride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, Cult of Chucky, what have you. But apparently Cult of Chucky was really good. So good that they want to reboot the franchise. Don't really see how that makes sense, but okay. Yeah, apparently they want to reboot Chucky for the new era. And according to the news, this reboot is going to be kind of like a Stranger Things situation where there's a group of kids and they are tormented by a Chucky doll, except this Chucky is a high-tech robotic doll of the future. Because we live in a world where apps exist. Personally, I think this idea is trash. <laughs> this is not good at all. For me, the charm of Chucky was that he is a voodoo doll. That's, that's what it is. He is a voodoo doll. And there are a huge lack of those in the film industry. There are a bajillion movies where a robot tries to kill humanity. A bajillion of them. I can list a bunch right now. Beep. But as far as I know, there's only one series where the monster is a serial killer who has died and had his spirit implanted into a creepy looking doll through voodoo magic in order for him to continue the merry quest of homicide. That is completely unique to Child's Play as far as I know. And what they want to do is take that uniqueness away and make Chucky a robotic doll for the future. Because Furbies happened, remember those? This is the most cold, lifeless thing I've ever heard. I, I am not going to watch this movie. I'm not. I'm sorry. I don't want to see you suck what was unique and cool about Chucky and throw it out the window in favor of another robot attacks humans story. So no. No thank you. No. Remember that Sonic the Hedgehog movie that's apparently coming out? Uh, last time I talked about it on the show, I gave an incorrect piece of information because back then it was rumored that Paul Rudd was going to star as the human lead in this movie. Well, turns out that was very wrong. And this network apologizes for misinforming the masses. We'd also like to apologize for the following. Now it turns out that role is going to be played instead by James Marsden of X-Men and Westworld fame. And I'm on board, I like James Marsden a lot too. I mean, he's no Paul Rudd, but James Marsden is awesome. And now there's more news on the Sonic front because it looks like we have cast our villain, Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Evo Robotnik, that's his first name. I know the lore, kids. Don't test me. I'm single. Turns out, Dr. Robotnik is being played by Mr. Jim Carrey. This is really funny news. I can't believe this is happening. Jim Carrey is playing this guy. This is insanity. Oh my god. I can't wait to see how he looks. This movie is Baffling! I could not be more excited for the Sonic movie. And you know what? I don't even care what the plot's gonna be. And since we haven't really received a word of a plot, it doesn't sound like the filmmakers really care either. I just want to see how the hell 
human beings interacting with a CGI Sonic interacting with Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik is going to look. I just want to see what that is before I die. What is that going to look like? Now all we need is Jaleel White to come back and play Sonic and we are set for life. This is going to be the greatest movie ever made. Academy Awards. I'm looking in your direction. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't like Star Wars. Particularly, they don't like Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. And if you didn't like Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, that's okay. I liked it. I respect that you didn't like it. We cool, baby. But what's not cool is when a bunch of misogynistic, whiny babies start petitions saying they want to remake The Last Jedi and get rid of all those dumb women characters and make Luke a badass and have it be what I want because I'm a man. That's when we get to hilariously not cool territory and somebody who shares my sense of humor has gone and drawn a beautifully hand-drawn poster for what this supposed real man's remake of The Last Jedi is gonna look like. And here it is. This is perfect. Whoever drew this poster, I wish I knew their name, but this is exactly what I picture when I hear these whiny little kids talk about the Star Wars film that they deserve. And there's so much detail going on here. I got You gotta look closely. I'm gonna try to zoom in on this as best as I can. Please forgive the decline in quality as I tell Final Cut to expand the image here. But first of all, we got Luke. And of course, he is not Luke Skywalker as we know him. He is big, badass Luke Skywalker with a sword and a gun because badass guns. Of course, I mean, why wouldn't Luke be like this? He is supposed to be the badass hero who has muscles and a six pack and manly things. And we don't want women in our movies. We want men heroes, man. And what better villain to pit him against than Kylo Ren, but manly Kylo Ren with man muscles and spikes. Because man! But Kylo Ren's not the only villain. Snoke is in this too, you know. And of course, people demand to be given exactly what they want, exactly how they want it. So in this film, Snoke is going to sit down and show us a PowerPoint presentation outlining his origin and his plan. All in one neat little package so that we can go home without having to ask those pesky questions. Or use our imaginations to fill in blanks. Because nobody wants to do that. A Death Star? Sure, a Death Star is a symbol of raw masculine power, but why have one Death Star when you can have three? This is what real men Star Wars look like right here. Look at this. Three balls. Three big floating balls in space. That's the man's way. Finn is here too, but he's some kind of cyborg thing. I don't know what he's doing, but he's there and he's got a hat. That's always cool. And look, it's Yoda. Jedi Master Yoda in a chair with a minigun on it because Jedis kick ass take names, and do other things that men do with their brawn. Of course, there are female characters in Star Wars too, like Rey and Princess Leia, but these real auteurs who know what they're doing have put them exactly where they need to be. In the kitchen or in skimpy bikinis. Right guys? Because that's where the women belong. I want to reach out and hug whoever drew this poster because they, they get it. And it is... It's so much fun to see whiny babies get made fun of by everybody. It is. Because at this point they have earned it by doing what they're doing. Again, it's okay to hate The Last Jedi, guys. It is 100% okay. And it's 100% okay to like it. It is not okay in any way, shape, or form to make others feel bad or wrong for not liking it or for liking it. And it's very not okay to impose these masculine ideals and say, keep your women out of my Star Wars and all this bullshit... Because that's exactly what it is. It's bullshit. I love this poster to death. I want to hang this on my wall. This is hilarious. Whoever drew it, thank you. You made my day. And that has been Real Deal. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I will see you here next time. Until then, adios.